Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I am going to discuss about the postdoc versus industry job. And essentially if you are somebody who has finished his PhD, then you have these career options in front of you in many cases. So one of the viewers has asked me about clarifying this particular problem because it may happen that you have these two career choices in front of you. Maybe you have obtained a postdoc position, you have also obtained an industry job and you need to determine which is the best option for you. So I'm going to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of each of these possible career paths and then you can decide based on your personal proclivities. So let's begin. Now, of course, you should remember that the postdoc is essentially something which you do to further your PhD. And what happens is that if you have done a PhD, maybe you have published a few papers, you want to do a postdoc, publish more papers, maybe in the same area or in a slightly different area, and then apply for a faculty position. So essentially the postdoc is really a preparation to enter academia and to stay in academia and university systems for the rest of your life. So I'm going to divide this video into five points and then we are going to discuss these aspects. So let's start with the number one point, which is in the long term, do you see yourself being a professor or do you see yourself being an industrial research engineer or scientist? So that's the number one point. Now, like I mentioned before, as far as postdoc is concerned, it will train you to be in academia. In academia, typically, it's favorable for people who like to do research, who are somewhat of lone rangers. They are not necessarily people who like to be team players. They do not like to have managers. They also are people who like job security, who like to work on a set of problems for the next 10 to 20 years. These people also are willing to accept lower salary sometime to do this kind of job. So what happens is these guys don't want a boss. They don't want a manager. They want to have their own timings. They want to have their own students. They are somewhat of independent researchers. So strong independent research mindset is something which is very much required to be an academic. Now here you have to keep in mind two things. You essentially have to publish papers and you have to teach. So if you are somebody who really likes doing these two activities, then the postdoc path is for you because the postdoc will get you down the road into a teaching position. Now, of course, there are a few people who may want to do a postdoc just to get a job in a foreign country. So that's something different. So this is a case where you do a postdoc in some foreign country and then maybe you take an industry position there. So I have made a video on that topic also, postdoc to industry. So if you are somebody like that, you can take a look at that. Now, let's look at what typically happens in an industry job. Now, many a time when you are a PhD, you are hired by corporations to do research and these jobs are very similar to what they give to master's people. So essentially, if you apply for a typical research engineer, research scientist, even a senior engineer type of job or any job regarding scholarship and so on, what will happen is that you are going to get a job which is similar to what a master's degree person gets, but after three years of work experience. So essentially, the PhD is counted as something like two to three year of work experience after a master's degree and you will have to do similar type of research. So some of the thing you need to do as a PhD in industry is to suppress your ego and pride. You need to learn how to work in a team. You should not insist on people calling you doctor and so on. You should also be somebody who is now more focused on applications of all the research and technology and science and publication is not going to be your goal in most cases. Of course, do remember there are certain fields such as pharmaceuticals and biosciences and even in some large companies in computer science where you are allowed to publish, but in most cases they will actually prefer that you patent any new technologies you come up with, any new drug molecules you discover and so on because they actually want to guard the intellectual property. They do not want to share it with everybody out there, which is the typical mindset in the university system. So again, this varies from people to people. There are certain people who actually feel that they work better in teams. They work better when they have a manager who tells them what is to be done. When there is a actual human resource department in the company, which can help them get their career growth aspirations met, where there are certain things which are going on, for example, team building exercises, parties, offsites, and so on. 
these are something you will generally not find in academia where all the people tend to be lone rangers so at the end of this i would say some of the things you can take is that whether you like teaching whether you like to do research and publish papers or you are somebody who likes to work in teams and somebody who actually likes to apply the research into new problems now let's look at number two point and that is the salary now as you all know the companies and the industry tend to be highly profitable in most cases and so they are likely to pay a higher salary now even if the starting salary is not very good what happens in a typical company is that as you get experience there is a likelihood that you may leave the company so they will quickly start increasing the salaries after a few years but what happens in the university is that they may start you off with a reasonable salary but then the salary increases will be quite less because they know that you are somebody who has chosen this particular path and you are going to be there for the next 10 to 20 years so the salary in the case of universities is considered more of a stipend you are simply paid the salary to do what you actually like to do which is teaching and research in this case so very likely the industry is likely to pay you much more than the university system in the long run now this case may change if you go to a foreign country and work there and get a high paying postdoc but do remember the cost of living in that country is going to be more so for example if you land up a postdoc in switzerland Though the postdoc may pay you a lot of money, the cost of living in cities such as Zurich and Geneva is also very high. Now, the third aspect has to do with the temporary versus permanent job. And what happens is that postdoc positions are typically temporary. So they are for one year or two years or three years at the max. And in many cases, every year they are renewed. So you may get a position, for example, as a Humboldt Fellow for one year and then at the end of this fellowship you essentially have to return to your home country or you need to find a new postdoc so some people get trapped in this postdoc cycle and they have to move from places to places they have to be minimalist and portable to do these movements and what happens is that it may be difficult for them to land a permanent position easily because there is a huge competition for permanent faculty position so do remember postdoc is temporary now as far as the industry position is concerned it is also of course not a permanent position in the sense of a government job but what happens in most cases is that the manager who has hired you he would like you to work there for many years to come or at least a few years to come because he has made the decision to hire you so if you are able to get the industry job you will probably be secure in it at least for a few years and so you can consider this to be a job which is more permanent of course do remember that if your skills are good you increase your skills while working in the industry you can always leave and join another company now this is much more hard to do in university because if in university you apply somewhere else you are always going to need letters of recommendation you cannot leave a university in the mid term because you have classes and so on and also different people are going to call up your department chair and different professors and say why exactly this person wants to leave so this is something which is a problem as far as university is concerned it's quite hard to leave a university once you have joined it so that's something to remember now like i mentioned before the postdoc is very temporary and the industry job is more or less permanent at least for the short term now the fourth issue has to do with the visa problems and this happens because if you do get a postdoc in some foreign country then you are on a visa this visa may permit you to do the postdoc but it may not permit you to work in that country so for example in the us you may be on a j1 visa or on a h1b visa in the university but you are stuck to this particular employer so in the case your postdoc is finished you have to go back to your home country but it's somewhat difficult to actually immediately get a job in your home country unless you are in the academic system so sometime you may be able to get a visiting professor job in your home country sometime you may be able to get some job as a faculty also but do remember that most companies like to hire people in the vicinity of where they are so companies are very reluctant to hire people who are internationally located because they want the people to join very quickly maybe in a few weeks or a few months and therefore they want to recruit people from the neighborhood of where they are in so this is again a problem that the type of visa you have may restrict your mobility and therefore in the postdoc position you may get stuck in some location and the only other jobs which are out there for you may be postdocs or other academic job 
Now, of course, there are some cases if you are in hot fields, if you have made good contacts, if you have a good resume, you can get a job in one of the corporations as a research scientist in any country you are in. So that certainly is also possible. Now, finally, the fifth issue has to do with more of a long term issue. And that is whether your long term aspiration is some kind of greatness in life or you want to have a normal life. Now, many professors think that they are on the path of greatness because they publish papers. And one thing which academia tries to teach you is that by publishing papers, you leave a mark on the world, you leave a mark on scholarship and science. And it is a path of greatness to some level because whatever papers you publish over a lifetime of university work, you do create some archival content for the long run. Now, in the industry, you generally have to work with whatever problem you have. And the only way to become famous in industry is to rise up the corporate ladder and become the vice president or the CEO of the company. So once you have become a CEO of the company, of course, you are globally famous. But people who are working in normal level positions, they are generally not somebody who can get a lot of fame or a lot of name recognition out there. But as far as universities are concerned, many professors who write a lot of papers, they become famous, at least on Google Scholar, and they think that they have made a huge impact on the field. So again, this is up to you to decide as to what do you think is more important? Do you think a regular career is more important or this kind of fame is more important? Because again, there is no guarantee that a person is going to get fame over the long run. Maybe they will not do too well in research. Maybe they may not even get tenure and so on. So these are always things which are possible. Now, finally, I would say there is a point about the kind of community, the kind of family you belong to. Now, if you are somebody who is coming from a family which has a lot of regard for the academic traditions for the university, then it will be easier for you to go in this postdoc path and then pursue further life in the university and academic system but you are not from one of these communities and do not have a supportive family as far as education is concerned then it may be better to go into the industry because your parents are of course going to ask you to make a decent amount of money maybe get married or move on with your life and so this is something which you need to do so again this is a variable which is different depending on the person concerned depending on whether he is a man or a woman depending on whether they are coming from a certain community, certain type of state and so on. So you need to keep all these things in mind. So this was my take on postdoc versus the corporation and industry job. And I hope it helps you. Of course, the final decision has to be your decision. And I hope you make a good decision and have a good time with your future. So I'll end this video now and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.